Hi, this is Kendra from Redgate's Advocate Team. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create a pipeline for SQL change automation in Azure DevOps using YAML. Here's a few buzzwords for you. <laughs> so what I've already done here is I have already created a database with some sample code in it. I used the Northwind database whose code is downloadable from Microsoft and GitHub. And then I created a new SQL change automation project, set up my development database here. I have a local development database and I went ahead and baselined from the database that I had created here. I then pushed the code that SQL change automation committed from my database up to an Azure DevOps repo. I renamed my master branch to main, which you can do in Azure DevOps. You can create a new branch, set it as the default branch, and then delete the old branch if you wish to rename a branch there. So I've got this all set up in here. And if we look in my main branch, I've got a folder named Rollback Northwind. And then inside it, I've got all of the files that SQL Change Automation created including my .sql proj file, which is named rollback underscore northwind .sql proj. This is automatically generated and it describes all the ways in which your project works. So I'm gonna copy this file name to my clipboard just for convenience. And then I'm gonna go to the pipelines page here. And you can open this in a new tab if you want. You can just right click open in a new tab because I may wanna go back and look at that repo again. And I'm gonna say, I want to create my first pipeline. So I'll create this here. And then I need to tell it where my code is. I could have put this in different places, right? It's totally fine if you wanna put this in GitHub or Bitbucket. We put ours in this case in an Azure repo. And I just need to, I could have multiple repos in this project. So I just selected the one I want. And now I need to say what kind of pipeline I wanna use. And I'm gonna pick a starter pipeline once you do this once or twice, maybe you'll have an existing YAML file that you'll want to reuse, but we're doing a starter pipeline here. Now here in the trigger, it has a branch name. Even though I deleted that branch, it persists in having that old branch name in there. So I do need to tweak that. I want this to automatically run when things happen in my main branch in this case. And then below that, we have a pool, and it suggests that I might want to use a VM image running Ubuntu. In my case, I've configured a build agent that I want to use. This is actually in my organization. If I go here to and right click on my organization, in the organization settings, I've done a couple things. Under extensions, I have added the extensions from the marketplace for the SQL change automation build and release. And then in my agent pools, I configured some agent pools. And if we look here, here's the Kendra's house agent pool. <laughs> and this has my derp agent in it, which is the, I want to run this build actually on an agent on my local machine. And in part, this is because I wanna build against a developer instance or a developer edition SQL Server instance that I've installed. So if I wanna use um, enterprise features like create index with online equals on, it will succeed. If I build against local DB, unfortunately local DB doesn't let you use all the syntax you can use in enterprise edition. So I've set up this agent here. And if you need to set up a new agent, you can do this. There's good documentation on how to do it. But I've also uh, set this so that it is provisioned to my project. You can either do this automatically or set it up in individual projects. And I've given it permission to run on all pipelines in my project, which is in the project setting. So I have already done that. So the, the agent pool I wanna reference here is named Kendra's house. So I'm just gonna delete this where it says VM image and say Kendra's house, cause that's the agent I wanna use. Now, after the rest of this, after this, the rest of this is real easy. There are some default settings here or default steps here. You want to keep the word steps. I've accidentally deleted that before and things go wrong. You do need to have the word steps in there, but you can delete the default steps if you like, and then you can click show assistant. 
this you don't have to write all this YAML from scratch. You can look at the Redgate SQL change automation build component in the assistant. So I just typed Redgate to bring this up. And now when I click on the build task, it says, oh, what do you want to build? Now, in my case, I'm building a SQL change automation project that uses the migrations first approach. If you're using SQL source control, you'll want to do slightly different options in this wizard, right? So you can do a very similar thing, but you'll select a different item from this list. But I'm sticking with this first one. Now, where is my project? We just looked and my project is in. I created a subfolder for this, right? So I have rollback underscore Northwind as the outer folder. And then inside that is my rollback underscore Northwind dot SQL proj. I also need to specify a NuGet package ID. So I'm gonna, this is just a naming thing. And for each of these, you can hover over, of course, you can hover over the information thing to get a little more explanation if you don't remember. And then I want to run this against a SQL server that my build agent can access. Mine happens to be on the build agent itself. So I could specify a dot for local or I could specify whatever this happens to be named. And then I am going to leave the database blank. I'm gonna say you can dynamically create a database for this build and get rid of it. Now for my purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and use Windows authentication. I have, when you install your agent for the build, you get to pick if it runs as a service, what account does it run under? And I have given that account permissions to access the SQL server. If you need to use SQL server authentication, I encourage you to go up here and click on the variables tab and use the ability to keep the variable secret, right? So if, you know, my variable for my username was test, I could have a password that I store in there. And then it shows you how you would reference that in a pipeline, which is super handy there. But in my case, I'm doing Windows authentication, so I don't have to do it. That's just a very convenient thing if you happen to be using SQL auth. Now, if I want to document the database, I can check that off. If I want to use a specific version, I can. One thing I often like to do is I do like to append the build ID to the NuGet package version. So that's one of the things that I like to do to uh, make the package version unique for each build. Now that I've set that up, I'm gonna click add down here. And what this does is wherever my cursor happens to be over here on the left, it's going to populate that with YAML. You can edit this directly if you want. So if I actually do want that to be a dot, I can change it there. Or if you wanna edit it in the wizard, this settings is actually a hyperlink. So you can click on settings, bring the wizard back, edit things in here. So I'll set this back to derp. And once I've set it back, I can click add. Now I've still got everything highlighted here, so it is going to replace everything. If I didn't have everything highlighted, I might end up with duplicate values I needed to clean up there. We're gonna go ahead and let's give this a name. So we're gonna name this build rollback Northwind. Not the greatest naming convention, but uh, nobody's perfect, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna click save and run there. Notice it is committing this YAML file to the main branch. So it's gonna go ahead and get this job going. And what it's already done, it's initialized the job. It's checked out the code from the main branch and now it's beginning the build. So it's connecting to the database I specified and first thing it's doing is it's validating my project. It then is creating, since I didn't specify the database name, it creates a database, builds inside the database and exports the artifact for that so that if I want to uh, perhaps deploy this somewhere, I can now use the release uh, plugin slash extension and say, oh, I wanna go ahead and deploy this to a database. So this is the basics on creating a release pipeline with YAML. Let's just edit it to admire uh, the pipeline. I used to actually be really like intimidated by this because I didn't understand how to use the assistant. 
turns out it's actually super easy. And I have to give a little shout out to Rob Sewell, who showed me exactly how easy this was when I made fun of YAML one too many times. It's really not that bad. And I really like that now I do have the YAML file in here. So if I wanna use this exact same pattern for other builds, this is really nice and reusable. Also, it's documented really, really clearly what that build is doing. Thanks for joining me for this video on using YAML for builds with SQL change automation. I'll see you again in another video soon. Bye folks.